Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. We bless your name for your goodness. We thank you because of what you have done already. We thank you for this session of prayer. I will thank you for what you are going to do in every life now. We are asking, Lord, that every desire, every petition, every request of your people, one by one, one and all, you grant everyone today in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let faith work wonders in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, of them that diligently seek him. You'll find that this 11th chapter of the Hebrews is a chapter of faith. A chapter for the heroes of faith. A chapter for the people that prayed, that acted, that lived in the realm of faith and the Lord blessed them. And the Lord used them to bless all the people. And he says, as you look at the hall of faith, of the heroes of faith, and you want to be like them, and you want to be as significant, and you want to be as important in the kingdom like them, it says, you look at everything, verse 1, now face, verse 4, by face, Abel. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch. Verse 8, verse 7, by faith, Noah. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham. And in verse 11, through faith also, Sarah. Then he goes on to verse 17, by faith, Abraham. And then by faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. By faith, everyone that you find in the chapter. They came up, they rose up, and they received by faith. And we too, in the strength of the Lord, we too, by the power of the Lord, it is by faith we're going to receive. You receive this morning in Jesus' name. What kind of faith are we talking about? We're talking about kingdom faith. You come into the kingdom by faith. And then one of the major characteristics of that kingdom is faith. And when you have the faith of the kingdom, the faith that the king in the kingdom has established in your heart, produced in your heart, that faith will bring results. And the faith will bring results in your life today in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6. And I'm reading here from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6. Reading from verse 12. It says that she be not slothful. It's telling us now you'll see other people, Old Testament and New Testament. And they would live by faith. They walk by faith, they prayed in faith, they received by faith, and they had marvelous exploits in their lives and ministries by faith. It says, we now, as we see the examples that will not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. A lot of promises the Lord has given for us in the word of God. There's a promise of salvation. There's a promise of holiness and sanctification. There's a promise of healing. There's a promise of deliverance. There's a promise of all provisions for life and for ministry. And it says, if we're going to inherit these promises, and thank God I will receive. I say, thank God I will receive. It says, it is by faith 
we inherit the promises. Then it goes on to say, Master Gina, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no other, by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely, blessing is blessing, I will bless thee. And the Lord is telling us the same thing today. For us who are children of God, like Abraham, friends of Christ, like Abraham, possessors of the kingdom, like Abraham, he tells us, surely, blessing, I will bless thee. Did I have an amen over there? And multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, waiting for the fulfillment of the promise, knowing that God cannot fail, knowing that his word cannot fail, knowing that his power cannot fail, he said, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He obtained the promise. Why is that written for us? For us to understand, like they obtained, we're going to obtain. I am going to obtain. Every promise the Lord has given for the New Testament believer, every promise the Lord has given through Christ who died for us on the cross of Calvary, it says, they endured, he endured patiently, and therefore obtained the promise, and as we follow the same pattern, and follow the same attitude, and follow the same dependence upon God, we're going to inherit the promises. For men very least swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. When in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, heirs of the kingdom, heirs of the promise, heirs of the provision, heirs of all that God has prepared for us, by an oath he confirmed to them. When in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. He said, the Lord has placed himself on record that this is what he will do. And what he promised he will do, he will do in your life. He will do in your family. He'll do in your ministry. He'll do in your profession. And he will accomplish his word in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. As we talk of faith, we talk of the promise because it is the promise we rely upon. It is the promise, the word he has given that we stand upon and those promises will be yes and amen in our lives in Jesus' name. Let's see how God is faithful to his covenant. How God is faithful to his promise. How God is faithful to anything and everything he has said in every generation. In every age. In every dispensation. And to anyone that believes in the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, and what he told Jeremiah, the same thing is telling you. I said the same thing is telling you. And he said unto me, the Lord said unto me, that was well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. This morning is the morning of performance. And the morning of expectation and realization. And the morning of great wonders and great things being done in every life in Jesus' name. I will hasten my word, the word of promise. I will hasten my word, the word of salvation. I will hasten my word, the word of transformation. I will hasten my word, the word of sanctification. 
I will hasten my word, the word of healing. I will hasten my word, the word of deliverance. I will hasten my word to perform it. Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 25. For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. I will speak. And thank God he has spoken. And the Lord is speaking to you. And he says, the word that I shall speak will come to pass. Look at verse 28. Therefore, say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken shall be done. Shall be done shall be done says the Lord God that's what strengthens our faith that's what places us on a sure ground a ground that cannot move a ground that cannot shake a ground that is built on faith unshakable because his word will definitely be fulfilled in every life in Matthew chapter 24 Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away my words shall not pass away his promises will not pass away his proclamation will not pass away and what he has told you declare to you that he will do will not pass away he says though the sky may pass away though the heavens the firmament may pass away though the elements might pass away the word of the lord and the word of his promise will not pass away it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 89. Psalm 119, we're looking at verse 89. Forever, how long? Forever, church, how long? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Every promise you hear, every promise you read of, every promise you claim, every promise you are standing on, it says forever, this word of promise, this word of power, this word that will soon be performed in your life, that word is settled forever in heaven. And the Lord will accomplish it in every one of our lives in jesus name our god is an impartial god and our god is a god that is no respecter of persons as he said to abraham the same thing is saying to you as he said to david the same thing is saying to you as he said to men of old patriarchs and prophets and the people of old the same thing is saying to you that though heavens and earth pass away, his word will not pass away. There will be a fulfillment in your life. Okay, if you are not there, there will be a fulfillment in my life. It will be done. I said it will be done. Psalm 89. And I'm reading from verse 34. Psalm 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break. My covenant will I not break. It's a covenant that promises salvation. It's a covenant that promises redemption, total redemption, and full redemption. And it says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the sin that is gone out of my lips. 
That means then as we talk about faith, we can come to God on a sure ground. We can come to God with certainty in our heart, knowing he will not break his covenant, knowing he will not disappoint any of his people. That's why this morning we're looking at kingdom faith. Kingdom faith. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our recovery. Number two, our renewal. Number three, the release. The Lord will release power into your life. Miracle into your life. He will release good things into your life. Even this morning in Jesus' name. Number one, our recovery through personal faith. Our recovery through personal faith. Number two, our renewal through prevailing faith. Our renewal through prevailing faith. Number three, the release of powerful faith. The release of powerful faith. Number one, tell me number one there. Let me hear you use the preacher's voice. Our recovery through personal faith. You'll find, especially as you come to the New Testament, that the Lord emphasized thy faith. The woman that had the issue of blood, thy faith. The woman that claimed forgiveness and salvation and peace of God, thy faith. And the man that had the servant, as thou was believed, thy faith. And the woman that came to Jesus Christ, pleading for the daughter, thy faith. And so as to have this personal faith, the faith you manifest by yourself. This is what brings all the promises of God, and they are great and they are many. All the promises of God, and they provide for every area of your life. This is what makes all the promises of God to be yes and amen in your life. They will be fulfilled. Somebody there said they'll be fulfilled. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman, that could be you. Just make up your mind and tell yourself and tell whoever wants to hear, I will be this man, I'll be this woman manifesting personal faith. And with that personal faith, I'm going to have the fulfillment of every promise of God in my life. Verse 25, and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years. You know, somebody might have a problem that had gone on for many years, 10, 12, 20. The time doesn't matter to God. And the nature of the problem doesn't matter to God. And the things you have tried and failed, that doesn't matter to God. And the places you have gone, and the places you are planning to go, that does not matter to God. As you bring your face this morning, something good, miraculous, marvelous will happen in your life in Jesus' name. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And had suffered many things of many physicians. And had spent all that she had. You see, the problem had taken her to many places. Looking for solution in many places. Spending much money. And it says, and had spent all that she had. And was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, the moment you hear of Jesus, solution has come. Yeah. Healing has come. Yeah. Salvation has come. Yeah. Deliverance has come. Miracle has come the moment you hear of Jesus. But you know what? You must do something about what you are hearing. She heard of Jesus. And then she said something. 
she heard of Jesus and then she did something as we pray we must back up our prayer with our confession confession of faith as we pray we must back up our faith with the action of faith it says in verse 27 when she had heard of Jesus she came in the press behind and touched his garment somebody is going to touch the Lord today by your faith you will touch the Lord by your prayer you will touch the Lord by your confession you will touch the Lord by your action you will touch the Lord by the attitude of heart by the disposition of your heart that problem will vanish away as you touch the Lord today in Jesus name and it says for she said she may talk to herself my problems are over she's been talking to herself I've come to the final bus stop I'm not searching for any other solution anymore my solution has now come for she said if I may but touch his clothes I shall be made whole I shall be made whole and everyone telling themselves that once I pray once I mention his name, what I stand upon is promise that cannot fail. And once I touch the power in the kingdom, the promise in the kingdom, once I touch Calvary, the provision of Calvary, I know I shall be made whole. It will be as we have said. And you see, it was like she said, and straightway, verse 29, straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes heaven will recognize you are touching heaven Christ will recognize you are touching him the heavenly father will recognize you are touching Calvary today in Jesus name it tells us in verse 31 and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done the sin. But the woman, fearing and uh, trembling, knowing what was done, in her you will know you will have a testimony knowing what was done in her i see your miracle coming your way i see the power of god touching you today came and fell down before him and told him all the truth this is where we're going now and he said unto her daughter tell me Tell me out aloud. Let me hear you there. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith, personal faith. Thy faith, the personal faith will grant us salvation. The personal faith will grant us sanctification. The personal faith will grant us the baptism and the power of the Holy Ghost. The personal faith will grant us healing. That personal faith will grant us deliverance. That personal faith will grant us dominion. Thy faith has made thee whole. You'll be whole today. Go in peace and be whole of thy play. We're coming to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 21. 
you ask him for yourself you ask him for a member of your family you ask him for a friend you ask him for somebody you know your face can go very far and your faith will touch them matthew chapter 15 verse 21 then jesus went this and departed into the coast of tyre and sidon and behold a woman of canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O lord thou son of david for my daughter is grievously vexed with her devil i've had some people that say i don't know how to pray i don't know what i'm going to say we don't need to go to a special school to know how to pray look at the prayer of the woman just in one verse of scripture have mercy on me i need mercy i don't have marriage i need mercy i need a miracle i need mercy i need deliverance i need mercy i need a touch on my daughter he said have mercy on me O lord that's how to pray lord have mercy on me lord fulfill your promise lord do something we don't have to cry, shout, roll on the ground. It's just to demand the mercy of God. And thank God, mercy is what you are going to receive today. Amen. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Verse 23. But he answered her not a word. Don't let that put you off. The answer will still come answered not a word don't let that discourage you it's just a test of your faith whether your faith is strong and thank god i'm looking at somebody there today your faith is strong yeah. and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she cries after us and he answered and said i am not saint but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she, then came she, and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, help me." That's the prayer. Lord, help me. That's all you need to say. Lord, heal me. That's all you need to say. Lord, deliver me. That's all the prayer. Lord, work a miracle in my life. That's all you need to say. Lord, I need help. Help from heaven. Help from the supernatural. Help from Calvary. Help from you. Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not meat. It is not right. It is not feet. It's not suitable to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Whatever direction your test is coming from, you will pass the test. You will receive your miracle. Verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith, thy faith, thy faith. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that hour. Looks like your hour has come. <laughs> Looks like you are going to get it even this morning. Mark chapter 10, reading from verse 46. Thy faith, thy faith, the recovery we have, the restoration we have, the redemption we have through personal faith. We're looking at Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. 
It doesn't matter what your condition is before Jesus gets to you. Once Jesus gets to you, every condition will change. Every situation will change. Verse 47. And when he had heard, that's it, that's the secret. When he had heard, the other woman were read about when she had heard. And this one, when he had heard, you are hearing. I said, you are hearing. You are hearing of Jesus the Savior. You are hearing of Jesus the Sanctifier. You are hearing of Jesus the Healer. You are hearing of Jesus the Baptizer in the Holy Ghost. You are hearing of Jesus the Coming King. And as you hear, and you make a move. You hear, and you confess. You hear, and you believe. You hear, and you act. You hear, and you act on what you are hearing. Your miracle will come. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. He began to shout out and say, that means he began to pray, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see that prayer? It's short. It's simple. It's straightforward. There's no complication in prayer like this. You don't have to go and learn from somebody. How did they pray? How did they praise God? How did they exalt God? What are the magic words they say to bring miracle? Here are the simple words. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many judged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Nothing will shut your mouth. Nothing will stop your prayer. No circumstance surrounding you there. And no discouragement from anything happening around you there will stop your miracle this morning. But he cried the more, a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. His prayer caught the attention of Jesus. Your prayer will catch the attention of heaven today. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do? unto thee what kind of question is that jesus said i hear you saying have mercy on me that's general now be specific have mercy on me everybody can say that the leper can say have mercy on me the blind can say have mercy on me the paralytic can say, have mercy on me. The sinner can say, have mercy on me. The publican can say, have mercy on me. It's general. Now be specific. What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, I'm going to be specific now. This morning you are going to be specific. Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said, said unto him, Go thy way. Tell me what follows. Thy faith, thy faith, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately, when is your miracle going to happen? And immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus in the way. Number one, the recovery you will recover the sickness will not end your life the sickness will not terminate your life there's going to be a recovery and that recovery will come to you this day in jesus name our recovery through personal faith point number two our renewal through 
prevailing faith. Our renewal through prevailing faith. He will renew us. Renew your heart. Renew your soul. Renew your spirit. Renew your person, your inner man. You are coming much, much alive even today in Jesus' name. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. You are receiving more than one miracle today. Miracle for your spirit. Miracle for your soul. Miracle for your body. Miracle for every member of your family. Miracle everywhere around you. Verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. It's a God who forgives all iniquities will be forgiven. Salvation will come to everyone. Who healeth all thy diseases. In the kingdom of God, there's no incurable disease. He will heal all your diseases. Verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Look at this now. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. So that the youth is renewed like the eagles. It will renew your life today. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. He renews our spirit. He renews our soul. He renews our personality. It says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Our spirit. Our inner man. He renews us. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that she put on the new man, you'll become a new man, a new creature. On the inside, you'll take away every iniquity, every infirmity, every disease, and every sin, every sickness, every satanic influence, it will take away in Jesus' name. And that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness are you there created in righteousness and true holiness i can't hear you i don't know whether you are there or not he will renew your life in jesus name look at luke chapter 1 verse 74 luke chapter 1 verse 74 that ye will grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies, we might serve him without fear. Give me a good amen. amen. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Renewal is coming to you. Amen. Acts chapter 15. Reading from verse 9, Acts chapter 15, we're reading from verse 9. This is by faith, this is by faith, and this is what he will do for you and for us. And putting no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts, cleansing their hearts, renewing their hearts, purging their hearts, sanctifying their hearts, by faith by faith it will happen i said it will happen there is the recovery everyone recovery is coming to you there is a renewal everyone renewal is coming to you and then there's a release there's a release Powerful faith will be releasing miracles this morning upon your life in Jesus' name. 
the release of powerful faith point number three in romans chapter four romans chapter four reading from verse 16 therefore it is of faith salvation therefore it is of faith healing therefore it is of faith deliverance therefore it is of faith holiness therefore it is of faith sanctification therefore it is of faith the power of the holy ghost therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace by grace are you saved through faith by grace are you delivered through faith by grace are you sanctified through faith by faith are you made holy through faith by grace are you healed and delivered through faith by grace are you renewed through faith it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed the promise might be sure to all the seed everyone this morning the promise is sure for you not to that only which is of the Lord but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all what's the faith of Abraham verse 17 as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed what's the faith of Abraham I believe God I believe God I believe God my healing is coming I believe God my sanctification is coming I believe God my renewal is coming I believe God the power of on, on from on high is coming upon me I believe God he believed God whatever it is you need you manifest the faith of Abraham this morning he believed God even God who quickness the dead I believe in God the God of resurrection the God of all power the God of creation the God who is omnipotent the God who is so sufficient and call it those things will be not as though they were and call it those things will be not as though they were he believed in God number one he believed in the God of resurrection the God of creation number two he believed in the God that sees the end accomplished before the commencement before the beginning and he called it those things will be not as though they were before you pray you're sure of the answer i said you're sure of the answer are you already calling those things would be not as though they were i am healed somebody there i am healed i am saved somebody there i am saved i am sanctified somebody there i'm sanctified i am baptized with the holy ghost somebody there i'm baptized i am delivered somebody there i'm delivered I am blessed. Somebody there, I am blessed. He called those things would be not as though they were. Look at verse 18, who he gives hope, believed in hope. That's the faith of Abraham. That's what releases powerful faith in your life. Because it says he hoped against hope. This is hopeless. No, not in my life. This is helpless. No, not in my life. This is impossible. No, not in my life. In my life, I'm saying for you in your life this morning, all things are possible. Yeah. That he might become the father of many nations. At that time, he had no one single child. He had nothing, and God promised him everything. Maybe you have nothing, and everything is coming your way. Yeah. Maybe you are poor, prosperity is coming your way. Maybe you are penniless, but abundance is coming your way. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, that's the secret. And being not weak in faith, no possession, not weak in faith, no land, not weak in faith, no son, not weak in faith, the wife getting old, not weak in faith. And whatever it is happening in your body this morning, you are not weak in faith. I said you are not weak in faith. 
not and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. There's something you'll not consider. I feel pain here. I'm not considering that. I see this on my body. I'm not considering that. I see the medical report. I'm not considering that. You will not consider what you see. You will not consider what you feel. Because a miracle is coming in. I will turn everything around in Jesus' name. And it tells us, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Those uh, promises the people of the world will say, they're unbelievable. He said, no, I don't have cut off that vocabulary out of my personal private prayer dictionary. In my prayer, I don't have any impossibility in my dictionary of prayer. How about you? I said, how about you? He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. Somebody there this morning, you are strong in faith. I said, you are strong in faith. Giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. Persuaded? Not enough. Fully persuaded? That's the word. Being fully persuaded, you are persuaded this morning. You are persuaded that all the miracles are flowing into your life. You are persuaded that the promises of God are being fulfilled in your life. You are persuaded that great things are going to happen in your life this morning. They will happen in Jesus' name. I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. What he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now, he switches from Abraham and he switches unto you. This is talking about you now. Are you there? I said, are you there? This is yours. Say, this is mine. Not now. It was not reaching for his sake alone. That it was imputed to him. But for us also. For me also. For me also. I said for you also. For me also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe. I'm talking to believers this morning. The believers are there this morning. Where is the believer there? You are there this morning, it's getting to you in Jesus' name. It says, if we believe, as we believe, since we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered by offenses and was raised again for our justification, raised again for our redemption. Redemption has come to you. Raised again for healing. Healing has come to you. Raised again for our justification, our salvation, our redemption, our sanctification, our experience of power. Raised again for our victory. Your victory has come. All the powers of the enemy will be cancelled, will be destroyed out of your life today. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, and that's all you need. Say, that's all I need. I said, say, that's all I need. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Whatever the arrow of the enemy, this is all you need. Whatever the problem from the enemy, this is what you need. Whatever the harassment from the enemy, this is what you need. 
whatever impossibility you felt in your life before this all you need and whatever may wage war against your life this is all you need above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able god is able and we are able god is able and you are able ye shall be able to quench how many furry darts all the furry darts of the wicked your time of miracle has come your moment of miracle has come the power that raised up jesus from the dead will come will touch your body this morning you'll never be the same again in jesus name remember now as we pray it's not just prayer you take the shield of faith Remember, as we call upon the Lord, it's not just calling, it's not just crying, it's not just shouting, taking the shield of faith, saying, yes, I believe. Abraham believed, I believe. Abraham believed that the God of power, God of resurrection, God of, God of uh, omnipotence, all power. And I believe, God, that collect those things would be not as though they were. And I believe, you take the shield of faith. And then you are able to quench. You are able to destroy all the furry darts of the wicked one. Today, you are the favorite of heaven. The beloved of heaven. All you need to do is come to the Lord, to the throne of grace and say, Lord, I believe and it will be done. Lord, I believe and it will be done. Lord, I believe, and it will be done. Where are you? Are you there? Lord, I believe, and it will be done. Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, Lord, I believe, take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. Your recovery has come. Your redemption has come. Your renewal has come. And the release of power to your life has come. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe it will be unto you according to your faith. Lord, I believe it will be unto you according to your faith. Lord, I believe personal faith, personal faith, personal faith. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe it's happening right now. It's happening right now. Healing is happening to you right there. Deliverance is happening to you right there. Justification, salvation, redemption. I believe, Lord, I believe, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be sanctified. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be purified. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be renewed. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be endured with power from on high. Redemption, justification, sanctification, everything in the package, everything in the promises of God. Everything coming upon your life, coming upon your life, coming upon your life. It's coming. This is the morning of your miracle. Your heart will be renewed. Your life renewed. Your spirit renewed. The salvation here for you today. Call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Healing available for you today. Call on the name of the Lord and be healed. Provision, employment, prosperity, progress. Call on the name of the Lord and be prospered. All the promises of God, yes and amen. Call on the name of the Lord and receive the fulfillment of the promise of God. It's there, it's there. Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith is there. Take it. Manifest it. I believe God. I believe God. His promise cannot fail. I believe God. His power cannot fail. I believe God. He is omnipotent.
present right there with you. Yes, I believe thy face has saved thee. Thy faith has healed thee. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has delivered thee. Thy faith has sanctified thee. Thy faith has empowered thee. Thy faith has put the miracle upon you. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Something must happen in your life. Anywhere there is faith, something good must happen. Anywhere there is faith, something supernatural must happen. To your heart, to your spirit, to your soul, to your destiny, to your family. It's all of faith that it may be by grace. Say, I believe God. I believe God and release your faith. I believe God, release your faith. I believe God, release your faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Possessors of miracles, in Jesus' name we pray. Now it's time to release the faith. Something is going to happen to you. Your prayer has been answered. My prayer has been answered. Can I remind you, Peter was in the prison, bound between two soldiers, and there were soldiers at the door, and the church was praying, and God answered the prayer of the church, like God has answered your prayer. And then the chains were broken, like your chains have been broken. And the angel said, put on your sandals. You are getting ready and you are dressing for victory. Yeah. And then come. And he came and he came out. Somebody there, you have come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then he thought, where will I go? And he went to the place where they were praying for him. And he knocked at the gate. He knocked at the gate. The answer had come. They were not opening the door for the answer. And then Rhoda came out and said, It's Peter. It's Peter. God has answered our prayer. Stop praying and start rejoicing. Stop praying and start rejoicing. They said no. They said no. They said no. It was he praying. Oh God, deliver Peter. Oh God, deliver Peter. I said to you this morning, your prayer is answered in Jesus' name. And Rhoda said, I'm not joining in the prayer now. I am praising God. I'm praising God. Peter is released. Samuel is released. Stephen is released. Josephine is released. Mary is released. You are released in Jesus' name. And then Peter kept on knocking. Your miracle is knocking. Open the door. Your miracle is knocking, open the door. Your healing is knocking, open the door. Your deliverance is knocking, open the door. And they opened the door. Lo and behold, their miracle was standing before them. Your miracle is standing before you right now. We're going to open the gate and we'll release the faith. It is coming. It has come. It has come. I receive in Jesus' name. If you are opening the door, raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, 
We thank you because we know you have answered every prayer. For the brother, for the sister, for the boy, for the girl, you have answered every prayer. For the parents, for the children, you have answered every prayer. For our leaders, our workers, and members, invitees, you have answered every prayer. Lord, we release our faith. We welcome the miracle now. We welcome the healing now. We welcome the salvation now. We welcome the holiness now. We welcome the power now. We welcome the renewal now. We welcome the recovery now. We welcome the answer in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Mountain, get out in Jesus' name. All tormenting powers, tormenting spirits, come out in Jesus' name. Receive. 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 All things are possible in your life. It is done. It is done. It is done. You possess the miracle right now. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 